Okay, so here is uh, Honeycomb. Um, as you can see here, it's got definitely got this really nice, uh, weird kind of uh, Tron-like look to it. Um, and the lock screen is probably one of my favorite parts of it. I just think it looks so sleek and nice. Um, but you've got this uh, this button here that you, all you have to do to unlock the device is move it outside this circle. And actually just touching outside the circle actually works too. Um, but um, so here is the home screen of Honeycomb. Uh, as you can see, it is silky smooth. Just really, really nice. Um, a lot of that has to do with that, uh, that Tigra 2 processor. Just silky smooth. Very nice. Um, and uh, what we're about to do here is kind of uh, uh, take you around for a tour. But here up top is your video camera, uh, surrounded by Motorola and Verizon logos, of course. Um, down here on the bottom of the screen is your status bar. Um, and notifications uh, bar where kind of things filter in. You see I've got a lot of notifications here near the time. Uh, right here is your Wi-Fi uh, and here's your battery. But let's go ahead and take a look, closer look at those things. Okay, so we're zoomed in on the status bar now. Um, as you can see, here's the time. There's the Wi-Fi bar I was telling you about and the battery indicator. These are all notifications down here. And uh, this is one of my favorite parts about Honeycomb is how notif notifications are handled. In, in usual Android OS uh, on smartphones, uh, you have to swipe that shade down. Um, and in Android, as they come in, in Honeycomb, as they, as they come in, you just simply touch that and this little pop-up box appears. And then get it to go away. You can either touch it and it takes you to the Gmail app. Touch it here. Or we'll, we'll go to Twitter, I guess. But yeah, you touch it and it takes you out to the Twitter app and touch another one and it takes you to the other corresponding app. So it's taking us to the market. Actually it's, it updated Angry Birds so it's taking us to Angry Birds. But yeah there we go it took us to Gmail that time. But yeah as you touch them these little pop-ups come out and actually the pop-ups as they uh, when they come in that's actually what it looks like. As they come in and they eventually fade away and all that's left is these little icons down here. But yeah Notifications are just, they're completely out of the way, um, and it's just a really elegant way of, of handling uh, notifications there. So as you can see, here is like a list of the settings you can tweak, and then on this side is a scrollable list that you with check boxes that you can check and uncheck. So um, it's just a really handy way to handle it, uh, with settings always being no more than just a few taps away in the status bar. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the buttons over here on the left that are replacing the soft touch buttons that usually reside below the screen um, on most Android devices. Okay, so we're back at the status bar. Uh, of course, here's your home button, here's your back button, and this is a multitasking button. I really don't know what the proper name for it is, but uh, when you hit it, up pops your five most recent apps that you've used. And as you tap them, it takes you immediately to that app. So let's go to Angry Birds. So there's Angry Birds. All right, let's tap it again, and we'll go back to Gmail. So there's Gmail, and we will tap it again, and we'll hit up settings. So, I mean, as you can see, it's just really, really quick, um, the multitasking on here. And uh, here's the back button, so if we want to go back, just tap that, and we're back out of the home screen. Uh, and back again. Let's go into Gmail, and I'll show you the home button here really quick. We tap the home button, and we're back out to Honeycomb. So uh, that's that's essentially how it works. Um, uh, it's a really, again, another great design choice to have these down here, um, and just be part of the status bar. It really gives it a really kind of Windows uh, feel uh, in, ter in terms of the operating system. It kind of feels like you're operating within Microsoft Windows. Uh, sometimes, as much as you use this bar down here to get back and forth between the OS, and actually. It really gives it a nice desktop computer feel to it. So Windows users should um, actually feel really at home on this, even though it's a Android OS. Um, but uh, let's take a look um, a little further into the. Uh, let's take a look at the browser now. That's a good place to go. So we're going to go ahead and tap that and zoom out. All right. So now we're inside the browser, and uh, we're going to visit the Gadgetron blog, Grayson.blogs.tuscaloosanews.com. Now, as you can see, it loads really quickly. 
And the Tuscaloosa News is not a uh, not a quick site to load. We're almost done here, but even though we're not done, I mean, you can see that we can smoothly scroll through. We can zoom. It's just really smooth. It's easily the smoothest Android browser that they've they've come out with. link here and as you can see that little progress bar is up at the top here's an embedded YouTube video go ahead and click that and it takes us to the YouTube app which is kind of hit or miss it's a really nice design you've got some relevant videos and comments uh, as you click that it changes to comments um, but uh, it, in terms of performance, the YouTube app is kind of hit or miss. It'll crash sometimes in strange situations. And then other times it'll do this problem. It says there is a problem while playing touch to retry and touch it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, performance is kind of hit or miss on it. Especially with high quality videos. It's probably some, they've got a uh, patch. It's actually playing now. And full screen it. And when our video is playing down here, you'll see that the the uh, navigation buttons and the settings buttons they become these little dots, and you just touch to make them come back. And they actually they work just uh, just fine like that. But let's go back to the browser. Just really impressed with the speed of the browser um, and uh, tabs. Just work. I mean, you can go in and out. So that's loading up and go to another tab. That's loading up, we can go to another tab. Very minimal uh, lag time between site loading. I mean, it's just, it, it, it just screams, to, to be absolutely honest, it just, it flies. And I love being able to switch between tabs like that. It just makes working a lot easier, very much like uh, the regular Chrome desktop experience. So that is the browser. Um, the Gmail app, we'll take a look through that as well. Um, over here, I don't have a lot of messages in my inbox, but there is where your messages go. And over here is where the, the body of the email is. It's a really nice design. Gmail users will definitely love it. Um, here's the new Android market for tablets. And this will give us a chance to talk a little bit about the shortcomings of the Zoom. Um, really beautiful Android market design. It's easily the most uh, appealing and uh, aesthetically uh, version of the Android market. Um, over here you've got your categories. Let's scroll. And here you've got your actual featured apps. Uh, here's the featured tablet apps. It's up at the top here. And since in the past few days, they've added quite a few. Um, we're still well under a hundred tablet-specific apps in the Android market, and that's really my biggest uh, nag uh, with the Zoom. Um, Google really should have made it a priority to get um, at least uh, I don't know, at least a thousand. You would you would think um, Android apps. I know that sounds like a really high number, but when you're competing against Apple and Apple throws out a thousand apps on the first iPad's launch day, you you really don't have any choice. But um, in terms of uh, I'm not saying, like I said in my column, I'm not saying that the number of apps won't grow, but it really does need to at, uh, at a pretty quick pace. Um, apps are one of the first things people uh, you know, look for. Uh, while the browser is really great and the OS itself is just really elegant and very super just fast <laughs> is the word, really the main word that comes to mind, it has a lack of third-party tablet-specific apps and uh, people want those. People want tablet specific apps. They want to be able to you know take handwritten notes and they want to be able to you know have a giant calculator for whatever reason. Uh, so uh, I really want to see these these apps grow and the quality of apps has to be there as well because um, that's another thing that Apple has done really well is ensure uh, is ensure quality. We'll go ahead and look at some of the, uh, the other elements of the OS here. Uh, this is how apps are handled. You page through these uh, under this app drawer that can be accessed on the home screen, it's right up here. Tap that. Okay, head back out. So that's how you get to your apps. Uh, and then widgets, I'm sure you're wondering about those because they're super handy on here. We've got a really nice email widget, Gmail widget, Twitter, Twitter widget. 
Um, widgets are accessed by either hitting this plus button up here in the top uh, right corner or you can just hold down on the screen and up pops this really amazing interface. Um, all your folders, uh, new email accounts, select settings, you can throw those onto the home screen. Here's where you'll choose your wallpapers. Here's where you'll choose, you can throw app shortcuts onto a, uh, a home screen, just like that. You just drag the app, hold it down over the, uh, the screen you want to drop it onto, wheels it over and drops it there, and here are the widgets. And you can kind of page through, and of course you can download more of those from the market, and hopefully uh, those will they'll start taking better advantage of the bigger screen because to be honest, some of the widgets are a little small for the screen real estate that they have. Um, I want to also take a look at this 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 is a, the books widget, and it's uh, Google Books, and I want to show you something. iBooks eat your heart out. This is just really nice. No lag, very fluid. Just a really great use of that Tegra 2. Just really nice. And if you turn it here, which you're not really supposed to, they really don't want you to, just because it does look kind of weird. But if you flip it up like this, if I can get it to go, there we go. You have just a giant book. <laughs> and it, it, it does feel really weird uh, because of how skinny the, uh, the zoom is. Um, but yeah, so that's books. It's a really nice... Uh, app that takes it full advantage of this. So there you have it. That's my little tour through the Motorola Zoom. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to comment on the review, um, which this video should be embedded in. Go ahead and comment on the review. Ask me any questions you have about it, um, and I will try my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. But overall, the Zoom is a smashing success uh, in, in terms of uh, an answer to the iPad because not only is it starkly different from the iPad, it's starkly different from any Android uh, OS that's that's uh, been on the market to date. But it's not just different, it's actually functionally superior in many ways. The browser is better, the notification system is better, and navigating through the OS is just is so intuitive because I think a lot of people are, are going to be able to treat it just like they treat their Windows computer that they're very used to. So. Uh, the only really downfall for it is going to be the lack of apps. Uh, 65,000 on the uh, Apple App Store to less than 100 on the Android market. But with so many tablets from Android that's going to be flooding the market this year, that will change. The other nag is price. You can get a 499 iPad 2 with uh, similar specs. Same, uh, It's got a dual core processor as well. Uh, more apps. But if you're looking for a beast of a device that handles things quickly and uh, has got one of the more unique modes of navigation uh, for a mobile OS, then you really can't go wrong with Motorola Zoom and uh, the and Honeycomb, which is loaded on it. Uh, so that's it. So that's uh, kind of like a, a short look at uh, the Motorola Zoom. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, feel free to leave me a comment on the blog um, on this post or shoot me a message on Twitter. I'm at Wayne Grayson. That's W-A-Y-N-E-G-R-A-Y-S-O-N on Twitter. Um, so, yeah, uh, that is the Motorola Zoom uh, from Verizon and Motorola.